Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're diving into Material for MK Docs, the ultimate framework for creating stunning interactive documentation sites. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a new documentation portal completely from scratch and then hosting that on the web for free using GitHub Pages. Along the way, I'll show you just a handful of the awesome features that Material for MK Docs comes bundled with, such as setting a dynamic color scheme, adding a splash of personality with emojis, icons and logos to make your content visually appealing, how to create custom code blocks that are just based on the programming language specified, how to better organize your content using tabs, how to emphasize parts of your content using admonitions, also known as callouts, and how to bring your ideas to life with statically rendered diagrams directly in your docs. Now, you can follow along with me directly in this video, or if you prefer, I have a written version of this tutorial available on my website. I'll leave a link to the written tutorial in the description of this video. This is going to be a pretty in-depth tutorial, so if this is your first time using material for MK Docs, then you're probably best to just follow it all through from the beginning. But if you've used material for MK Docs before and just want to know about a certain feature, I've left all the time codes below so you can jump around the video at your leisure. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, then breathe in, breathe out, and let's explore this together. Before we dive into the demo, let's quickly go over the differences between MK Docs and material for MK Docs, as there is often some confusion. Plain MK Docs is a static site generator specifically designed for creating documentation websites. So by using MK Docs alone, you get a relatively vanilla and straightforward site for your documentation. On the other hand, material for MK Docs is a theme built on top of MK Docs. It transformed your documentation site with a modern, responsive design inspired by material design principles. Now, what's important to note is that this theme doesn't just change the look. It enhances functionality with built-in plugins that support features like blog posts, social cards, advanced search capabilities, and loads more. So basically, MK Docs provides the core functionality of building a static site, while material for MK Docs significantly elevates the visual and interactive experience of your documentation. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get to work on setting up our new material for MK Docs site. Let's quickly go over the prerequisites you'll need to have installed if you want to follow along with this tutorial. Firstly, do be aware that I'll be conducting this tutorial on a Mac. If you're following on Windows, then some of the commands we type into the terminal will be ever so slightly different, but I'll try to call those out. So we're going to be using the Python version of Material for MK Docs in this tutorial, and you'll need to have Python 3 installed. I'll be using version 3.12.6 in this video, so either that or a later version should work fine. We'll be using the Python package manager called pip to install the required dependencies. But if you're running Python 3.4 or later, then pip is included anyway by default. Otherwise, if you're using an earlier version of Python, then you might need to install pip. Now, to follow along with the coding, it's helpful if you have an IDE installed, and I'll be using Visual Studio Code in this video. And finally, we'll be publishing our documentation portal on GitHub pages, so you'll need to have an account on GitHub and ideally have Git installed on the command line as well. And that's all you should need. So let's jump over to a terminal and get started. So I've opened a terminal here and I'm in the folder that I want to install my MK Docs material demo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check my Python version. So to do that, I'm gonna type which Python. And I can see here that my Python has been aliased to Python 3. So if I just check my Python 3, so if I say which Python 3, I can see here that I've installed Python 3.12 and I've installed that through Homebrew. Now, if you're running on Windows, I think the command to use is where Python instead of which. So I now want to create my virtual environment. So to do that, I can do Python minus M B E N V V E N V. Then to activate that environment, we do source V E N V forward slash bin forward slash activate. And again, the command to do this on Windows is slightly different. I'll put that on the screen now. So now that we've activated our virtual environment, let's check our pip version. So I do pip and then it's double dash version. I can see here I've got pip version 24.2 installed. So now we can install MK Docs material. So to do that, I'll do pip install MK Docs material. 
So Pip's going to go ahead and install mkdocs material for us. Let's now open Visual Studio Code in this folder. So I do code dot, and within Visual Studio Code, I'm going to open up a new terminal. In that terminal, I just want to double check that my virtual environment is activated. So I'm going to do source vmv bin activate again. And now I can create my mkdocs site by doing mkdocs new dot. So we can see up here that's created a couple of different files for us. So in this mkdocs yaml file, I'm just going to add in the basic configuration for the material theme. So I've basically just added in the site name, a URL, and the theme name of material. I'm going to make sure I save that file. And then the terminal, we can do mkdocs serve. And we can see at the bottom that our site is running on localhost port 8000. So let's open up a browser there now. And as simple as that, we have a basic mkdocs material website set up. So to get the most out of material for mkdocs, it does require us to often make a lot of changes to this mkdocs.yaml file. When you're making changes to YAML files, it can be easy to make mistakes or errors and it can be hard to spot them. But luckily, Material for MKDocs does have its own schema that we can install. And then with that schema, we can then clearly see if there's any errors in our YAML file. So let's go ahead and get that set up now. So in order to do that, I need to install, make sure I have the YAML extension installed. So I'm going to go over to the extensions tab, I'm going to search for YAML. And then this one here from Red Hat, I'm just going to go ahead and install that. Uh, once I've installed that, if I just go down to the settings down here, click on settings to open up the Visual Studio Code settings. I'm going to change this to the code for the JSON uh, version of the settings. And then here after line seven, I'm going to paste in the code I need here for uh, mkdocs material schema validation. So again, you can get this from the documentation or from my accompanying blog post, which I'll leave a link to down in the, in the description down below. So just go ahead and save these settings. And now if I go back over to the YAML file, if I mouse over any of the key names here, like the site name, we can see that we get some more information displayed. So we get more information now displayed for all of the keys. And again, we'll see an error if we type something in that the mkdocs.yaml isn't expecting. So let's now make some changes to the style of our documentation, starting with changing the color scheme. So I want to change the color scheme to black. So here in the mkdocs.yaml, I'm going to add a new line. I'm going to say palettes. And then for the scheme, I want to change that to slate. I'll save that. If I take a look in the browser now, the color scheme has now changed to the dark color scheme. So because we're going to be making quite a few configuration changes and then just doing a live reload, I'm just going to put the code, the Visual Studio code alongside the browser so that we can see it a bit easier. Okay, let's also change the primary color scheme. So to do that, I enter primary and I'm just going to choose green. Save that. Now we can see the primary color scheme has changed to green at the top. You can see the links here are now changed to being green as well. Let's also change the accent color, and I'm going to change that to deep purple. Save that again. So now whenever we highlight a link, highlight a link we can see that it's changed to deep purple. So another cool thing that we can do is that we can actually add a toggle within our material site so that we can actually click on an icon that will change between light and dark mode. So let's see how to do that now. So I'm going to delete what I currently have in the palette here. And I'm going to paste in this new code, which has a scheme for the dark mode and the light mode. So the dark mode here, this is for the slate theme. We're setting the icon. We're going to see the icon in just a second. We've set our primary and accent color. And then we've done a similar thing here for the light mode as well. So if I just save that, and if we look at our documentation now, we've got this icon that appears up here. Click on that. We can now toggle between light and dark mode easily like so. Now there are lots of other options available to you in Material if you want to play with the color scheme. For example, if you want to add in your own custom colors or if you want to add in configuration where it will automatically change between light and dark based on the time of day. But to do that, do check out the Material documentation where this is explained. So let's now see how we can change the font in our Material site. Now Material actually supports all of the fonts from Google Fonts directly out of the box. So let's see how we can add those in now. So back here in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to close down the Explorer here just to give me a bit more room. I'm actually going to make the terminal a little bit smaller as well. So to change the font underneath the name, I'm going to type in font. And then for the text, and I'm going to choose the font Merriweather Sans. So let me save that. And if you look at the documentation on the right, you can see that our font has changed to Merriweather Sans. 
We can also change the font for the code parts as well. So to do that, we just type code and let's choose red hat mono for our code. So again, I'll save that. And again, you can see the font has changed there for the code as well. Now, if you want to add additional fonts that aren't available in Google fonts, or you want to make other font configuration changes, again, I would encourage you to check out the material documentation where this is explained. Before we go on, if you're finding this video helpful, please hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And if you're looking for more guides and tutorials like this about material for MK Docs and technical documentation in general, then do check out my website. Again, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Okay, let's carry on setting up our MK Docs material site. Now, another cool thing about material is that you can actually use over 10,000 emojis and icons directly out of the box with hardly any configuration. So I'm just here on the material documentation site and we can just see here, we could search for any icon um, here and then we can get all sorts of emojis and see you know, all sorts of different things that we could choose here to add to our documentation. So let's have a look now at how we can actually get that set up. So I'm here again, my mkdocs.yaml file. So I'm just gonna go down to the bottom below. I'm just gonna paste in this extra bit of configuration. So again, I'm adding these markdown extensions with these two options here, and that's gonna enable us to use all of the different emojis. So I'm just gonna save that. If I now open up my index.md file, which is our documentation file, I'll scroll down to the bottom. I'm just gonna add in a new sentence. So I'll say, I like to drink beers after I played soccer or football as we call it in England. I'll save that. We can see now that we get our emojis displayed in our documentation like so. So now that we've got emojis and icons set up, let's see how we can use one of those emojis and icons as the logo for our site. So I'm back here on the material documentation. If I just search for, let's say solid W, we can see we get this nice W symbol here. So this is the logo that I want to use for my site. My name's Willit, so the W kind of makes sense to use here. So jump back to Visual Studio Code in the mkdocs.yaml file. I'm gonna go up to the top, just underneath the font, I want to change the icon and we want to change the logo. And then the one that we chose here was font awesome forward slash solid forward slash W. So I just go ahead and save that. And if I now open my documentation in full screen, we can see that our logo has changed to this W up here. Now, if you didn't want to set the logo to an icon, but you wanted to set it to an actual image instead, you can easily do that. So let's see how to do that now. So in the docs folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called assets. And in that assets folder, I'm just gonna drop in the logo that I created previously. So just this simple little W. If I go back over to the MK Docs YAML configuration. I'm gonna take out the word icon here. I'm gonna move the logo back to the start. And then we're gonna point our logo to the assets logo.png that we just specified. I'll save that here. If I jump over to the documentation now, the logo's changed to the image that we just specified. If we look up here, we can see the fave icon is still set to the default MK Docs fave icon. So let's see how we can also change that. So again, I'm just gonna add in a fave icon into my assets folder. So again, this is a fave icon that I created previously. And to change it, what I need to do is say fave icon, and then we'll point that to the assets fave icon.ico that we just created. If I save that. And you can see in the top right here that the fave icon's now been updated. So you can actually change all of the icons that are present in the material site by default, for example, the back and forward arrows that appear. But to do that, do check out the material documentation where this is explained. Now, one of the best features of material for MK Docs is the ability to display code in a clear and concise manner. So let's have a look at how we can set up these code blocks now. So let's create a new page in our documentation for these code blocks. So in the docs folder, I'm gonna create a new file. I'll call it codeexamples.md. And then I'm just gonna paste in some really simple Python code. So here between the three back ticks, I just added in a really simple bit of Python code that's adding up two numbers. So let me save that. If I go over to my documentation site, click on code examples, and we can see here now that we've got this code block. But obviously it doesn't look that nice. It's not colored properly. There's no highlighting or anything like that. So let's see how we can get that set up within MK Docs so that it looks a bit better. So to do that, we just jump over to the MK Docs YAML file again. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here, just underneath Markdown extensions. I'm gonna paste in this bit of configuration here. And again, remember you can copy all of this from the documentation. If I now save that, I go back to my code examples.md and after the three ticks here, if I specify that I want this to be Python code by adding PY, save that. 
And then now after we've saved that, we can see in our documentation, this has been nicely highlighted for us. Now, obviously I just typed in PY here because I wanted Python code, and this is what's called a pigment. So you can find all of the different pigments are listed on this page. Again, I'll link to this in the documentation. There's a pigment for pretty much every language you would want, JavaScript, C Sharp, YAML, etc. So you can just find them from this page. So another thing that we might want to do to our code block is add in a title. So to do that, we can just add in the title keyword and then let's just call this file add numbers. If I save that, we can see that our code block's now got this nice title. We could also show the line numbers as well. So to do that, we just put in line numbers and then we're going to want to start it from one here. So that just shows all of the nine numbers starting from one. We could also start it from a different number if we wanted. So I would just change that to five, for example. But for here, I'm just going to keep it as one. We can also highlight lines as well. So to show you how to do that, let me add in another bit of code. So this time I've added in another code block, but this time it's for JavaScript. But here, as well as um, naming the file and giving the line numbers, I've also said that I want to highlight lines two to four, like so. Let me save that. So now here we can see in this code block, in this it's displayed as JavaScript and lines two to four are highlighted. Another cool thing we can do in Material is add content tabs. So these are really useful, for example, if you've got three different code examples in different languages, people can then click on individual tabs to see the text or the code behind those. So let's have a look at how to do that now. Back again in the mkdocs.yaml, right at the bottom, I'm just going to paste in another bit of configuration. So I've added in this bit here for the pymdanix.tabs and the alternate, size, alternate style true. I'll save that. My docs folder, I'm actually going to create a new file. Let's call this one content tabs.md. And in here, let's see how we can add some very simple text that's not code. So over here, this is just adding in three different content tabs. It's just going to show some plain text. It's going to show an unordered list and an ordered list. I'll save that. Then if I go over to the content tabs page, you can see down here, we've got the plain text, the unordered text and the ordered text and the ordered list. So we can just cycle between those three like so. Head back over to Visual Studio Code. Let's have a look at how this would look with uh, code instead. So I'll paste in some more code here. So this is doing now with code blocks. So we want two code blocks here, one for Python and one for JavaScript. And I'll just save that. We can see that our code blocks now appear here like so. So now we can cycle between these two different code blocks, which is really cool and useful. Let's next look at how we can add admonitions to our MKDocs material site. Admonitions are kind of like call outs, i.e. they're kind of a way of just highlighting certain text in the documentation. So let's have a look at how to add those now. So in the mkdocs.yaml file, I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I'm just going to add in these two entries here for admonition and pimdownx.details. Go ahead and save that create another new page for these admonitions. So in the docs folder, we'll create a new file, we'll call it admonitions.md. And then I'm just going to paste in a simple admonition. So this one's a note and it has this title here. So let me save this file. If I go over to my documentation, click on admonitions, and the admonition has just appeared here. So it's got the title and then it's got the text that appears under it like so. We could also add in a collapsible one. So let me show you what that looks like. That one's almost the same, except it has three question marks instead of three exclamation marks. If I save that one, and now we get this collapsible admonition. So we can click on it here like so. And we can see that the icon is slightly different, and that's because we've chosen an info type instead of a note type. So if you head over to the MKDocs documentation, you can see all of the different types of admonitions that you can choose. So we've got our note and info types that we chose. You can also have an abstract, tip, success, quite a few others here as well. So do have a look through the documentation to find one that suits you. Another cool thing we can add to our material site is diagrams. And these diagrams actually statically render in our documentation. So for example, if you wanted to put in a flow chart or a state diagram, you can just add in a few different instructions and then the diagram will render directly in the documentation. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. So I'm just going to close down some of these windows and then just go over to my mkdocs yaml tab. So here under super fences, I'm going to put a colon and I'm just going to paste in a bit of extra configuration. So I'm basically adding in this custom fences and I'm saying the name and the class is mermaids and then this format here like so. Again, you can grab all of this code just from the documentation or from the blog post if you don't want to type all of this out. But hopefully you can see all of that. We just save that file and let's create another new page. Let's call this one diagram examples. 
Dot.md. Now let's look at a couple of diagram examples. So here I've just put in this very simple flowchart. So I'm just going to save this new uh, diagram examples page and then open that up in my documentation. And you see for a second there, you saw the code for, for Mermaid for, for this flowchart, and then it converted into this actual flowchart. So this actual flowchart is being rendered directly from this code, it's being directly rendered in our documentation. So that's a flowchart. Let's also try a sequence diagram. So again, I'm just gonna paste in this code here for the sequence diagram, if I save that. And again, our page, our documentation now renders out this really nice looking sequence diagram for us. So again, there's lots of different diagrams that you can render in your documentation. We have here like flowcharts, sequence diagrams that we've seen. You can also do state diagrams, class diagrams, etc. So again, do check out the material documentation if you want to learn more about how this works and some of the other options that are available to you. So now that we've got quite a few different pages in our documentation site, what would be really cool is if we could add a footer that would appear on all of those pages. So let's take a look at how to do that now. So first we need to make a small configuration change in our mkdocs yaml file. So here just under the fav icon, I'm gonna choose features. And the feature that I want is navigation.footer. Go ahead and save that. The full screen version of my documentation, we see that we've now got this footer added that says made with material for mkdocs. And any page that I click on now will have that footer. Now a common thing to add into your footer is links to your other social media accounts. So let's see how we can do that now. So again, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the mkdocs yaml. Just gonna paste in these two um, blocks here. So this is just a call out to my YouTube channel and call out to my LinkedIn profile here as well. So obviously you can replace these with your own social media accounts. So again, I'll just save that head over to the documentation again. And now that we get these two little icons appear and they link to my YouTube account and to my LinkedIn as well. And again, these obviously appear on all of the different pages. And one final thing we might want to add is the copyright message. So again, to do that, you can just add simply the copyright key and then type in your copyright message like so. If I save that, once more, if we look at that, we can now see that we get this nice copyright message appears uh, in our documentation. Okay, so we've built a nice little documentation site on our local machine, but now we want to publish it on the internet. So to do that, we're going to use what's called GitHub Actions, and this is basically GitHub's automated CI/CD solution. We're gonna use that to publish our documentation onto the internet, onto a GitHub page. So let's see how we can do that now. So to publish to GitHub, I need to specify the actions. So to do that, I'm gonna add a new folder, and I'll call it .github. And in that, GitHub fold, in that GitHub folder, I'll add another folder called workflows. In that workflows, we add a new file called ci.yaml. And I'm gonna paste in the configuration for this GitHub action. So all that this is basically doing is just saying when there's a push to the master or the main branch, a GitHub action is just gonna do all of the work to install mkdocs material and then publish our site onto a GitHub page. So again, this should just work out of the box. You shouldn't need to change anything in this configuration unless you're running like behind a firewall or something, there may be some problems, but this should just work out of the box. So I'm just gonna make sure that I save this file. So now to publish to a GitHub page, I first need to push to a new GitHub repository. So I'm gonna create, I've logged into GitHub and I'm gonna create a new repository. I'm just gonna call it mkdocs material tutorial say 2024. I'll leave it as a public repo. I'll leave all the settings as the same and I'm gonna hit create repository. So I'm using SSH. So I'm just gonna grab this bottom command here to add the Git remote. If I head back over to Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna make the terminal at the bottom a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hit control C to shut down my locally running mkdocs site. So I now need to initialize a Git repository here. So I just do git init. Before I make my commit, I do actually want to add a git ignore file. I'll just add in a new file to the root. I'll call that .git ignore. And in my .git ignore file, I'm just gonna add everything that I want to exclude. So again, you, you can skip this step if you want, but it just can be useful. Otherwise you might just push too many files to GitHub that you didn't want to. So again, you can grab this .git ignore file from my repository that I'll link to in the description down below. Okay, I can close that down now. So I'll close that git ignore file. Now in the terminal, I can do git add dot to add all of the files for commit. I'll just do a git status just to check what's getting committed. That looks good. These are all of the files that we're gonna commit. So now I'll make the commit, say git commit dash M for the message. Let's call this one initial commit. 
And now I want to add that remote branch. So again, I'm just going to copy this command here, paste that git remote add there like so. And now I should be able to push to that remote repository. So I'll just do git push remote main. Oh, sorry, that's a typo. It should be git push origin main. Okay, so git push origin main. If I go back over to GitHub now, if I refresh the page on this repository, we should see all of our code is being pushed up here now like so. So now in order to publish our MKDocs material site to GitHub pages, we just need to click on settings here, go down to pages, make sure you choose deploy from a branch as the source. And then for the branch, choose GitHub pages, click save. And then once you do that, if you click on actions here, you can see that a new job has been triggered for this pages build and deployment. And the GitHub action is going to do all of the work of deploying our site on the internet for us on a GitHub page. So after a few seconds, the deployment should finish and we get this URL here. So if I click on this link, now we can see that our website has been deployed on the internet. So we can see it's been deployed at this address here like so. In this video, we've seen how to create and deploy an entire material for MKDocs documentation website completely from scratch. We've then taken a look at just a few of the awesome features that Material for MKDocs ships with. Now we've only really scratched the surface of what Material offers in this video. So to learn more about the many other features that are on offer, do check out the official documentation. But what about you? Are you using Material for MKDocs? What other features would you like to see covered? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.